Okay guys, so today we're going to be looking at a product called Aunt Bessie's Chitterlings and these say hand clean pork chitterlings. Um, I have used these before. I did just want to do a video on them though because I've been asked a lot about them. They are, um, I never recommend or never would use any of the pre-clean chitlings because, you know, I just know there's no such thing. But these chitlings come as close as you can get to being clean already when you get them. Now again, before I throw this package away, I just want you to see their Aunt Bessie pork chitlings. They're pretty pricey in comparison to the other chitlins like the Wilson brand or Armor or whatever brand you buy. They're pretty pricey. I, for this bag, a five pound bag, I paid, uh, this bag was $13.99. I've seen them for $11.99 this time of the year. Now normally around the holidays, uh, I'd say from September through Christmas, they were last year about $8.95. So anyway, I've seen them, that's a pretty big spread, huh? I've seen them anywhere from $8.95 to $13.95, and these are $13.95. Now, that's for five pounds. That seems pretty pricey, and like I said, especially in comparison to the other chitlings. But you get five pounds, and you get to eat five pounds because you don't have all the waste, and you're not have all the, you don't have all the throwaway. With the other chitlings, if you get, say if you had 10 pounds of the other chitlings, you may be eating five pounds because you're gonna throw away five pounds. But with these chitterlings, you don't have that waste, you don't throw them away. I wanna show you this, every chitterling is made like a sock. And what I mean by a sock is that one end is closed up. Look at this, look at this guy. Totally closed up, not leaking. Um, I don't know how that happens. I don't know how, how they do that. Let me say this clearly and most definitely that is not the way that uh, they come. Chitterlings don't come like that. So out of the hall. So they have to have done something to them. This is some type of man-made, um, look at that. <laughs> There's some type of man-made situation because chitterlings don't come like that. Every one of these chitlings also is about the same length. And they don't come like that either. You see how they're the same length? You see how as I'm putting them together, they're the same length? There's no variation in length. See what I'm saying? They don't come like that either. So um, how that happens, I don't know. But I would uh, venture to say that there's some kind of man um, made... Um, something that they're doing. I forgot to put my vinegar in. Let me put just about a cup of vinegar in there. And uh, let, that, let the first wash of the soap be in vinegar. But um, I don't know how they do it. And you know, I saw some people talking about this and they were saying that, well, this is how they come. And I saw somebody that even say they talked to somebody who was about 70 years old and he said that he used to uh, help do this with his parents when they used to kill hogs and actually get these chitlins out of the hog. And she, she, this lady on the internet was saying that the man said that this is the way they come. This is the way they look like. Oh, uh, no, 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 that's not true. I don't know who he was or what farm and what pigs he was talking about, but no pig anywhere would have a sock-like intestine where it's closed up on one end and open on the other. Let's just do quick anatomy. Every living thing, every animal, including the human being, has an entry point and an exit point. And so anything that enters into the body, every food, drink, whatever that enters into the body, has to come out. So a pig is no different. What he eats, he eats and then it has to come out of his body. He has, you know, he has a bowel movement, and feces, like every other animal and every other thing. So if this was in his body like this, it would go in, the food would go in, but it would have no way of exiting. So we know that's not possible, we know that's not true. 
that, does, that makes no sense. So um, don't believe that. If somebody tells you that, please don't believe that. Just think a little bit. You cannot have an entrance in to the body where food is concerned and no exit. There must be a way out. So you know that's not true, that, that that's the way they come. So I don't know how this happened. I've even tried to contact the company to ask them about the um, the closed in, how everyone looks like a sock, how everyone is the same length, and how they're closed up on one end, how that process happened. I have never been able to talk with anybody. They've never gotten back with me. I've left them messages because I'm just interested to know how it happens. You can look at them very closely, and I thought that you, there might be somewhere that you could see a scene where they put them together at the end, although I don't know for what purpose that would be. But that's not the case. That hasn't happened either. So that part, I don't know. Another thing I uh, heard, saw people talking about on the internet was that um, the fact that a few people said that they were tough. And, uh, you know, then you had other people chiming in saying, well, you just didn't cook them long enough. They are very tender. They are very good. Let me say this about these Aunt Bessie chitterlings. I have had them before. And in general, most times you get them, they are very good. And they are just, they're just, they are always very clean. You have really no cleaning to do. You, you look here, I have, there's nothing. Not a little bit, there is nothing on these chitterlings. So, but I'm gonna go over them anyway, anyway with a fine tooth comb, still with my uh, eagle eye and my kind of inspection. But there are people who say, well, you didn't cook them long enough. And then there are others that say, I cooked them, you know, uh, eight hours and they were still chewy. And then people say, you gotta cook them longer. But the ones that are saying that you've got to cook them longer, that is uh, just because their experience has not been that they found them to be chewy. I have purchased these on several occasions, and most of the occasions these were wonderful. These are great. They don't even, they're not even, there's not even much odor in your house when you cook them. I, in general, don't cook chit chit chitterlings in the house. I cook them on my back patio outside so they can breathe, and I can too. So, uh, but these are, um, the ones of you that are saying that, you just haven't got the right batch. You are wrong. I've had these many times. In general, they're always good. But I did have one time, and so did my daughter have one time, that uh, we got these chitter chitterlings and we cooked them like 12 hours. Cook, 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 cook. And where they were edible, but they never got completely soft and they never did lose uh, their chew. They were still chewy. I don't know what that, what that is about. That would never happen with just a regular chit chitterling that was open on end to end. I've never had that happen in my life. But these can be, uh, they can be, you can get a batch that's chewy. But it's not gonna happen, happen often because I've bought them several times and my daughter's bought them several times. And so usually they're great, they're fine. But there is such a thing as getting a batch of them that are chewy and as long as you cook them, they never really get tender. So um, I guess that's about all I want to say about those. I'm going to be washing these off. I'm going to put this water out, let more water in, do a little fine tuning, you know, really a little bit of eagle eye cleaning on these chitterlings. And uh, won't take me very long because they are very clean. The package says hand cleaned. I don't know how they're cleaned, but I've never seen anything like it. They are clean, clean, clean. It's the way to go if you don't want to spend those hours and hours cleaning chitterlings. And even though, like I said, it's a little bit more expensive, let me say again, the net product is probably not going to be more expensive because you're going to uh, save the waste that you put in the other, have in the other kinds of chitterlings. You're not going to have this waste here, so what you buy is going to be what you're able to eat. So I'm going to come back. We're going to go over these chitterlings. We're going to have to split them open. Now, we're not going to cook them in this fashion. This sock, we're not going to cook them like that. We're going to split them and then cook them open. But we'll, we'll let them sit a little while in this vinegar water. We'll come back, clean them up. Okay, guys. See you then. Okay, so here I've already just cut them all open, washed them, cut them all open, and I just wanted to show you too. Again, as I showed you before, they're like socks. They have a closed end and an open end. One open and one closed end. So then I just stick my knife down in here and um, all the way to the end. And then I'm just gonna begin to cut the back up just to open them up. And 
There you go. I'm gonna do this. I have one more left. I wanna show you again what, what you start with. That's it. Put my knife down in here. Cutting it open. There you have it. Let's let this water out. And we will. Go ahead and begin to move to the next step. I'm going to wash them a couple of more times. Then I'm going to get them into the crock pot. Be back in a minute. Hey, hey guys. Um, I realize these, these, this picture shot is really bad. It's the best I can do because I need two hands to do this. Uh, I just wanted to come in and show you just about with the, with the chitterlings. I wanted to show you how... Um, to you don't you know you don't cook pieces this large so I use the my kitchen shears and just cut just begin to cut um, pieces off and you want to get them bigger than bite size because when these be cooked they're going to shrink so much so if you cut it to what you think is bite size or what looks like bite size while they're raw then when you uh, get them cooked, they're gonna be so, you know, just too small. So you wanna cook to cut them bigger than bite size. So I'd say like, um, see where I'm holding here? I'm gonna go down to what might be two times or three times bite size, because they will shrink. But I wanted to show you one of the easiest ways that I find is using the kitchen shears. You don't have to do that. Let me show you. Um, with using a knife, but um, see where's my knife? Here. Okay, I'm gonna use this knife. It may not work very well because this is really not a sharp knife. It's all I have handy right now. So if you just, you know, like this, you lay your chitlins across your knife, and then you just cut them through like that. Um, mm, not easier, not harder. Uh, I, I, you know, I have done them like this. I, now I seem to favor using the kitchen shears, but it doesn't matter however you want to do it. Uh, either way, just as long as you get them cut. So I wanted to come in and just show you that. And I'm just about through here. And um, let me get my shears back. I'm just about through here. And uh, it's only been, you know, not long at all. That I've been working on these. So easy, I don't even want to call it work. So um, I would urge you to try these if you can find the Aunt Bessie's in your area. Um, anywhere in the Atlanta area, you can get them at Food Depot, and you can get them in other places, but I know that Food Depot has them. And um, if you don't have a Food Depot or you can't find them, just get on uh, the internet, get online, and look up Aunt Bessie's Chittle Chittlings, and um, find out where they're sold near you. Nice and warm, aren't they pretty? Very clean. Okay, so the chitlins are completely done now. Let's take a look at them. So now you, I, what I put in mine, I just put one um, jalapeno pepper in there. I put some salt, a little bit of garlic, and some onion powder. Um, and this one jalapeno uh, will not make it, um, jalapeno won't make it um, hot at all. It might just be a little bit, have a little kick to it. You'll see that the water, you can see that the water is greasy, as is the nature of uh, the, any water that you cook in any, ch any chitlin. But these, uh, as I was saying before, they, don't, they didn't have as much fat on them, so the water is not as greasy as um, it would be with um, 
any other kind of chili. So let's take them off. Now I'm gonna drain them. This was just five pounds. This is to give you some idea of how much five pounds uh, is. It was just, <coughs> excuse me, five pounds. And if you were gonna cook for any any number of people that like chitlins, ooh, it's hot. You wouldn't, uh, five pounds wouldn't even begin to do it. Um, but if you're cooking for one or two people, or you just want to try chitlins, you've heard about them, don't, not sure about how to clean them, not sure about what they taste like, this would be an excellent um, amount to start with, just five pounds. You see again that on um, the water, they are hot. Let's look at the water again. You can see that the water is very, is greasy, but not as greasy as you could expect them to be with chitlins, any other chitlins except these Aunt Jessie. And I don't know, again, if anybody knows how they are, are, are made, uh, because they they do seem to be made as opposed to just coming straight out of the hall. But um, <clears throat> if you know anything about them and you can give me any insight, because uh, I've been trying to find out how they are prepared, how they're made, uh, let me know. Comment. Okay, so here we have a bowl of chillings. This is five pounds of chillings. This bowl, um, let me look at this bowl, it's very hot. Uh, this bowl is just a, um, a large soup bowl. It's not a serving bowl at all. This is a large soup bowl. This, is, this would be enough chillings for one person. Uh, that one person, probably one meal that really loved chillings. If you only like chitlins, then it would be enough for two people, one meal. Um, there you have it. Just wanted to show that to you. Okay. Thanks. Oh, also, uh, I would serve this with coleslaw, some hot sauce, and maybe some collard greens, um, some cornbread, and maybe some candy yams. I'm not going to make all that now. Uh, just wanted to show you how these chitlins were done and uh, how they... Look, give you an idea if you want to try them give you an idea of what you can expect okay thanks for watching rate comment subscribe I'd appreciate it thank you